Hyperloop technology, which means a pod traveling through a tube in near vacuum conditions, could reduce travel time from Mumbai to Pune to just 25 minutes. Tonight, I'm joined by the pioneers, the first two passengers on Virgin Hyperloop, which is testing now in the United States. Josh Giegel, um, the chief technology officer, and Sarah Lukian, the director of passenger experience, joined me from their site in Las Vegas in the U.S. Thank you both uh, very much uh, for being with us. Um, to you first, Sarah, what was the experience like? It was absolutely thrilling. It, um, it was a combination of the psychological thrill of knowing that we were making history, as well as physically uh, just getting up to that speed, knowing that we were in the first Hyperloop ride ever. It was fantastic. Very smooth, honestly, and much quieter than I even expected. And what was the speed that you hit? Speed was about 48 meters a second, about 107 miles an hour. And how fast do you ultimately intend to get? Oh, well, the Hyperloop is going to be traveling at over 1,000 kilometers an hour. So we'll be ramping things up pretty significantly in the future. Wow, 1,000 kilometers an hour. What, uh, Sarah, is the experience going to be like for passengers? Will they, for example, be strapped in? Uh, that's a great question. So the answer is that the pod of the future is going to hold up to 28 passengers, so much more capacious than the one that Josh and I were in. And uh, it's going to be no strap in, nothing like what we had today for our safety demonstration. Um, it'll just be a much more relaxed, spacious space Let's bring in the with shots. no yeah. seat belts. There are going to be organic touches to make it feel more comfortable and serene as part of people's everyday life. Uh, you know, will you be walking around? Would that even be a possibility? I mean, or would you be sort of literally strapped to your seat as you were in the test? I think you would be able to, actually. There's enough headspace. And, you know, when you get up to a certain speed, it's like walking around in a train or a plane, right? It's the same speed. It's more the acceleration and the turbulence. Those are the moments where you Let's want people the strapped up. in. Yeah. The advantage of the Hyperloop is there's none of that lateral turbulence. There's none of the jiggling that you get when you're in a plane. It's a very smooth, unilateral ride. Uh, so we anticipate people will be able to get up and walk around. And Josh, what was the challenge in maintaining near vacuum conditions? Because that's key to uh, the magnetic systems and the electric systems working. It's actually much easier than you would think. Um, it's actually so easy that I lost a bet with <laughs> some of my team on it. No, so we have a vacuum pump in our system. You'd have a vacuum pump about every five kilometers or so. And then you do have some level of leakage, but it actually is a very small amount of energy used to pull the air out of the tube. So it's equivalent to flying at about 50 kilometers of altitude or about 200,000 feet. And that gives you the ability to go at these speeds by using a fraction of the energy consumption. And are you enthused uh, with this technology making its mark in India? We've been speaking about the Bangalore airport to Bangalore city, uh, Mumbai to Pune and back. Um, and you've got into lots of collaborations with state governments. So do you expect this to make its mark in India? I mean, I think there's enormous potential there. As you noted, it, this technology has, has the potential to absolutely change lives. It transforms how we think about where we live, versus where we work, where our families are, uh, what we want to pay for our homes, how we get our educations. So I think there's enormous potential in India, Mumbai to Pune. And I'm, you know, sort of selfishly hoping uh, that it'll give me an excuse to come visit India. I know Josh has already had the pleasure. Yeah, and I think furthermore, like we saw the first two people ride in a Hyperloop just like over 100 years ago. The first people flew on a plane. And I know I've spoken to a lot of a lot of your constituents, a lot of the people in Pune and, and Mumbai, and the thought of being able to go home every single night, I mean, that's amazing. To build a product that could allow people to do that, it's awesome. It's awesome indeed. I'd like to thank both of you very much for joining us. The technology is still a few years away from being realized for passengers around the world, but it does certainly seem very interesting indeed. Thank you both very much for being with us.